All right, welcome back to Phlebotomy Solutions. We'll be discussing bleeding time in this PowerPoint presentation. Now, the bleeding time test is used to evaluate how well a person's blood is clotting. The test also evaluates how long it takes the vessels cut to constrict and how long it takes for platelets in the blood to seal off the hole. Blood vessel defects, platelet function defects, along with many other conditions can result in prolonged bleeding time. So what is coagulation? It's a set of reactions in which blood is transformed from a liquid to a gel. As you can see from this photo, we have a broken blood vessel wall with red blood cell and platelets forming to plug it. Activated platelets, clot, and fibrin are all formed uh, within this coagulation. Now coagulation follows three pathways. The final three steps of these series of reactions are prothrombin activator is formed, we have prothrombin is converted into thrombin, and then thrombin catalyzes the joining of fibrinogen into a fibrin mesh. Now if you're not sure what these are, check the back of your textbooks for these definition terms in which they'll show you more examples of what prothrombin, thrombin, and fibrinogen, those three pathways that form uh, the reactions for a clot. So why diagnose? These tests help diagnose bleeding problems such as hemophilia which is no platelets, thrombophilia which is too many platelets, and of course what is bleeding disorder? Bleeding disorder is a general term for a wide range of medical problems that lead to poor blood clotting and continuous bleeding. Doctors also call them coagulopathy, abnormal bleeding, and of course clotting disorders. Now the different types of tests and exams that can be done is a complete blood count which may show low platelets or anemia. Uh, a coagulation test may also be needed which is a PT which is prothrombin time which may be longer. A PTT which is a partial thromboplasting time which also may be longer in the test results. And of course bleeding time in general may be longer. Platelet aggregation tests may be abnormal. And of course which abnormalities occur depends on the bleeding disorder itself. Okay, in conclusion, let's talk about post-care instructions. About 99.9% .9 of the time, post-care instructions are not given to the patient after a blood draw. We must understand that bleeding normally stops within one to nine minutes. However, values may vary from lab to lab. Coagulation starts between 10 to 15 seconds. So after we complete the blood draw, we need to apply pressure for three to five minutes. Then we will check for hemostasis or blood stoppage. If bleeding continues after three to five minutes, then apply more pressure for another three to five minutes and instruct the patient to not bend their arm. Bending their arm can, can cause continuous bleeding and also cause bruising or hematoma. Now, if you've already asked the patient, as you should have in the beginning, if they are any kind of medication like blood thinners, uh, which can consist of Coumadin, Heparin, Warfarin, or even Aspirin, then you should be aware that the patient could continue longer to bleed over three to five minutes the first time. So added pressure will be needed. Now second, we wanna wrap the arm with Coban and instruct the patient to leave on their arm for no less than 15 minutes. And finally, we wanna instruct the patient to not lift anything heavy for at least one hour or a hematoma may form. Now this last one is important because a lot of times we fail to instruct the patient to not lift anything heavy for an hour and then they go and they lift their heavy bag or their purse or go to the gym or do something where they apply pressure on that arm and a bruise or a hematoma forms. And then they come back and they blame the phlebotomist that they did the damage. To avoid that, we need to instruct them carefully that not to lift anything because they will cause bruising on their arm. That way, if they do lift anything heavy, they'll understand that they caused the hematoma or the bruise themselves and not blame the phlebotomist. So in conclusion, post-care instructions are important to the patient's safety and also protects the phlebotomist uh, from any accusations that may come from their own doing of a hematoma or a bruising.